How's it going everyone? Scott McKay here from Thinnet Graphics bringing you another Down and Dirty Tricks how-to video. Today I'm going to be using my Pack of Skulls series by Art Tool to do this image right here. We're going to use two of the templates. We're going to use Head Down and Old Yeller. We're going to use both positive and negative aspects of this stencil set. Mix with a little pocket graphics. Use a little General Mendes texture effects to really bring this image home. Hope you really enjoyed the project. But before we get started, make sure you like and subscribe and follow us for further notifications. Let's get painting. All right, we are going to do one of my six pack of skulls. This is the head down, this guy here. And I'm going to do this on a black surface. So I want to put the positive, I mean, the, the negative down so we spray inside. And I'm just taping the edges so I don't get overspray. A little trick I learned from Steve Driscoll was just to fold your tape over like this. That'll prevent the overspray from getting out of control. And it'll just kind of wick up. And so it won't stick down there. And I gotta make sure I get rid of the horn. And you know what, for good measure, we will throw a little bit of Gerald Mendez's texture effects in there. Um, to start, I'm gonna use the um, the illustration grade number four, uh, 5004 from Createx. This is a Steve Gibson uh, Air Oil Lead Edition. I like to start with a mid-tone. That way I can go back and I can change things up with lights and darks as opposed to starting with white and then cutting with black. I like to start in the mid and then work out of there. So we're just gonna spray a light, a lot of texture. I'm establishing a little bit of a light source now, you know, top-down light source. So I'm going to go heavier in the center. Nothing big. I know on camera it looks like it's really white, but it is a medium gray mid-tone. I want to come up from the center here. Just enough to establish some light. That's all I'm doing. And I'm not going to spray a ton here and here. And I'll show you. Because what happens is, you know, this, this is going to be pretty dark in here, right in here and here. So there's no need to spray a ton, but i got to get something there. Make sure I get the teeth area really, really bright in that center because that's going to have the most light source. Okay. And when I pull this off, you'll notice there's going to be no overspray. Or a minimum overspray which was really done, see? But just by doing that tape, it allows it to flip out. And now we have something to work off of when we put the head down template in there. But we're gonna throw another couple other ones. I think we're gonna use the old yeller and go this way and that way. So we'll flip them. So we're gonna do the same thing. We'll take a piece of tape. I'm going to try to pick a spot so it's easy to line up. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go there, like that. So see what I'm doing? I'm, no, I'm putting the back of the skull right on the cheekbone, and I'm putting the where the jawbone sits right against the cheekbone of that one. That way when I flip it, I can do the same exact on the other side and keep, you know, some symmetry. You know, they don't always need to be symmetrical. For this one, I'm going to keep it symmetrical just so I can kind of go over that little trick. Fold that up. 
and then we're going to do the same thing, just putting enough in there so we can work off it later. Okay, same thing. In here, start with a little texture. Now I'm trying. I'm going to try not to go. You don't want to paint too much here because then you're going to see that line. Um, and if you're worried about it, you can take the other template and just put it up against like that so you don't get that line going through. But we're not going to put a ton of paint here. It's mainly going to be up in this area, a little bit under here. Remember, this, this skull is in the background. So it doesn't need to be as bright as this one, which is nice about working in mid-tone because I can do that separation and that delineation at the end. So this is just to set up placement and registration. I'm not putting a ton of paint here. See now, see when I was doing that, I went a little too hard in there, which you're not going to notice that when I'm done, but. You know, if you're worried about it, you can go back in. You can kind of blend that out now. But it's not going to be too big of a deal. We're going to put some texture and some stuff in the background. A little good trick. At this point, don't flip it immediately over. You might still have some wet paint in here. You know, blow it off, get it dry before you flip it. Then obviously, we're going to untape it. The nice thing about this FBS Gold is it's very thin for one, that's why I use it for masking all the time, but it doesn't tear the stencil apart when you when you take off the, uh, the tape off the stencil. So remember, I put that there and that here, so now I can do the same thing. I can just rest that in there like that. You can hit that right under the cheek. Just kind of get that same tilt that looks pretty good and doesn't have to be perfect. Nature is never symmetrical. So same thing here. And if you don't want to go that nuts, you can, you know, you can take a piece of paper or just another loose shield if you don't want to tape it. So I'll do that a lot where I'll just take a shield like this. Let's see if I can find one here. Yeah, so I could take one of these larger templates like this if I'm worried about it. And I can just kind of hold it over here like that and not worry about the overspray. But then you can't hold the uh, texture stencil. So pick what works for you. Again, a little texture. Notice I'm not putting a ton of heavy paint. Now what I like to do at this point is I try to, I don't want this hard line from where the, the skull and the jaw is because there isn't a hard line. So I tone that out where I can still see it. So I know when I go in freehand and stuff, I know how to line things up, but I don't want it to be this stencil look. And that's how we take that out of there. And that is enough registration for the three skulls. Okay, now that this is all set up, I'm going to take my stencil here and I'm going to work from the back to the front since I'm on a dark surface. I want to do the background stuff first and then bring it up from there the way I shade it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piece of tape and roll it up. Just put it right there and just place this into position where I want it. 
You know, that way it separates this out so I have a good delineation from the front skull to the back two skulls. Now I can take my template and for this color I've mixed up neutral gray number one. I'm not going straight to black yet. I'm going to use black at the very end uh, for the darkest areas. So we're going to start with this uh, 5001 illustration neutral gray one which is the darkest of the line before it goes to black. So now what I'll do is I'll place the stencil and I'm not going heavy here. I'm just doing for registration. See what I'm doing? Just a very little bit, not, not a lot. And we switch cameras in for you. You can see. So I'm just gonna come in and I'm gonna hit the whole thing, but I'm gonna mainly hit the top because I know that's gonna be the darkest area. I'm gonna hit here. Same thing, I'm just going to go over the whole template. I'm just misting it in. I can go darker where I know I'm going to have a darker um, shadow area, like in here. I don't want to flood in here, you know, this part here, because that's, you know, the bone doesn't separate there. It goes all the way through. So I'm just using it for, you know, registration, really. Little bits. That's it. See, it's just just slightly there. I'm not doing a lot. I don't want it, you don't want it to go to you know 100%. Then you have no room to wiggle. It'll always look stenciled, and we don't want that. This little half moon shape here. That's actually where you know the vertebrae would go into the actual skull itself. I'm going to flip it over, make sure it's dry, and same thing. Try to keep it consistent left to right. Again, and these teeth really don't spray heavily in here. You don't want to have those dark lines. You just want them there for registration later for freehanding airbrush or if you're going to use brushwork, whatever you're going to use. Again, just a little bit of paint. Less is definitely more. I need a little bit more in the eye. It's not fully there to where I want it. Remember, it's always easier to add paint. It's harder to take it away. Okay, I'm gonna go down here, get a little bit more in the mouth. Just enough to set it up. Because we're gonna do after this is we're gonna go and brighten up all the highlight areas and get that push pull that shape. So we go from mid-tone to you know mid-dark. Then we're gonna go bright and then we're gonna carve all the detail final. Make sure we get this in. Okay. Now, before we pull this skull, make sure you go around the edge and just line it up. Make sure we're good. You can just add that shadow. I'm gonna do the same thing in here. I could probably reduce my paint a little bit more before I go freehand. You can hear, if you hear the paint, you can hear it's coming out a little, a little rough through the micron. Realistically, I shouldn't have used the micron for this. I should have just used one of my eclipses um, because the bigger opening and the bigger nozzle size lends itself to being able to get a smoother paint flow with a thicker viscosity paint. So there's always a trade-off. If you're gonna go with a micron with like a 0.18 or 0.23, you're gonna sacrifice the ability to run a more opaque, heavier paint through it. So for the most part, I typically stick with my Eclipses or my CHs or brushes of that type. Uh, microns I usually do for the very final. I just happen to grab it but you don't need a micron to do this type of work at all you can do everything with a regular model eclipse just a standard eclipse uh, hpcs is all you really need for probably 90 percent of the projects you ever do um, the micron is basically made for ink like consistency paint so when you're running like a thicker semi-opaque or an opaque like this you know the microns aren't really your best choice in a lot of cases 
Okay, now that that's done, pull this off. And now I have my basic registration of all three skulls, but I haven't gone super dark yet. I haven't gone you know, too far one way or the other. This lends to flexibility to be able to alter the skull so it doesn't look the same every time. I could take teeth out. I could change the eye sockets if I want. I can do things now because I haven't gone too far. So at this point, we're going to switch up. We're going to go to our white, and I'm going to bring out some of the highlights and really show you how to kind of pull the shape before we go for the final details. You never want to go in for the dark too soon. You want to work it um, you know, from light to dark, pretty much in this case. But we're going to push and pull. I always push pull. So like I said, if I'm going from medium, a medium tone with a little bit of texture. Now I've gone to a medium dark. So it's medium gray, medium dark. Now I'm going to go to a near white. I'll probably tweak it a little bit so it's not so pure and stark. And then we'll go to a near black. and. Uh, Finish this up. On to the next step. So now I got my white in the gun. I'm going back to my Eclipse. White is a thicker paint, so it's increasingly harder to get it through a 0.18 airbrush or 0.23 at volume. So this is where I go to the HPCS. You can run a thicker viscosity paint at still reasonably low pressure and get good coverage at the same time. So it's a balance whether you want coverage or if you want to make it really thin and slowly build, it's just how you want to do it. So I'm going to bring in some light sources here. And the cool thing a lot of people don't realize right off the bat about the pack of skulls is you have the positive and negative of almost everything. So you have the nose bridges here. That's the lower part of the nose bridge. And then you have the uh, eye and the lower eye. So what I'll go and do we're going to punch the highlight and I'm going to paint on the stencil itself and just come up and see that just popped out that nose bridge you can see that and then I'm going to flip the stencil I'm going to go down like this and keep my arm out of the way so you can see it and I'm going to come down right into that tooth area See how that just started to shape that out with very minimal effort. And I'm not doing a lot of coverage. I can soften that up by freehanding it in. Now I'm going to do the eye. So see right here, I'm just going to go. I'm just going to softly hit that edge. And I'm going to rotate it. Line it up. do there then just soften it up see you're already starting to get more shape let's flip it over we'll start this one from the bottom roll it over just keeping everything soft at this point not doing any freehand not getting crazy with anything um, the other thing I like to do at this point we can add the eyeball so this circle you can do the eyeball and it's got positive and negative, very similar to my pocket graphics. I'm going to put this in now. I'm just going to do one, just one side. I've often done that. Um, and this is the kind of time I want to do it. I'm just going to brighten it up a little bit. And then I'm going to go back to the stencil itself. Nope, see what I did there? I got a little bit of paint. My stencil wasn't quite dry. Got a little bit of paint on the edge. I'm going to wipe that off. So now we can add some more texture if we want. Start shaping out that skull. I'm going to put more, more white at the top to keep it bright. I'm also going to hit just the center of the skull right here, that kind of brow ridge, and just kind of pop that up. I'm already starting to get that nice shape. Now I'm going to go in, I'm going to carve out the lower cheek, just brighten some stuff up, brighten where the teeth are going to be. I'm 
it just enough to just enough to push it. And I'm still doing this with a pretty thick mix. You know, I'm not I'm not very over reduced, so I got really good coverage. And now I'm gonna do the same thing with the other skulls. There's the eye. I'm going to flip it over. I'm going to flip it around. There's the bottom of the eye. Right there. See how that just brought that out? Very minimal paint. I'm keeping it very loose at this point. Just shading. I'm going to come off the skull. I'm going to really hit this nose bridge. There's a light source. It's really hitting hard right there. And you'll see here. Sometimes I gotta be reminded of what's what and what's where. So right here, I'm gonna just hit that, just that bridge right there. And it's also just a nice way to bring out the cheekbone right there. See how that separates, you know, the front part of the jaw where it radiuses to the back. Now do the same thing the other side. Very little. The more you play with these stencils, the more you'll see the shapes and what's there. And how you can push and pull and change the design. And you know, if you don't over flood it at the beginning, you have a lot of freedom to like add things like, you know, different T structure, eyeballs if you want them. Um, take the jaw out. There's all sorts of stuff you could do. See, I'm just keeping everything kind of that middle ground, but it's brightened up a little bit, but I have some some shape, some delineation between, you know, different values and dark and light and things like that. Now I can keep it looser, like if I want to really do the background up, you know, we can take Gerald's templates, and this is a trick I do quite often, and I move it, I'm going to switch cameras here, I move it as I paint, so I'm going to give it a kind of a swirl background, so watch this, I'm just going to kind of go with it. And See what that did? Almost gives like a marbling texture. I'm just kind of making like a vortex and a shape to it. So you got to make sure you don't get too wet because that'll happen. Get a little spot, and that's fine. We'll work that out into the design. Like Bob Ross always said, there's no mistakes, just happy accidents. And 30 years of doing this, I've made a lot of happy accidents. So see, with that quick five minutes, or one minute, I'll have to look at the video. Just created an interesting background and some texture. That gives me some more freedom to freehand more by not having to be so rigid and tight. I'm going to give this a little bit of side lighting. Now this is where knowledge of anatomy will come into play. Understanding light sourcing and core highlights and core shadows. So what I'm going to do before I get too far, I'm going to come in and just hit some core highlights. 
right in the middle of that brow. This is the one thing a lot of people make the mistake is they'll put too much paint in this line, making the eyebrows look really dramatic. I spray very little just so it's enough registration so I could freehand it later. I'm just gonna come up to the temple. And then we're gonna get the, the cheekbones a little brighter. Now we're just gonna hit the teeth. What I do for the teeth at this point, I just do some soft dagger strokes. Just to kind of give it a little just a little separation from tooth to tooth. Now what I do a lot of, and this is something that you know I kind of planned, but my pocket graphics, the pyro, lines up perfectly with the cheekbone. And you can pop that out even easier like that. So you can actually soften it too. We can kind of come to the edge. And you can soften that transition in there. And you know, I haven't done any line work, any harsh details yet. It's all just soft shading and building the tone. You know, because I really want to get rid of this jawline. And once we start going more into the black, I'll do that. Same thing with the teeth here, just little. I know what those lines are, so I'm just gonna hit it soft. But I'm not doing a lot, I'm gonna hit the line work later. at that point I think I'm gonna leave it there and then we'll start adding we'll go to our darker color and really start carving the details and maybe come back in for a little final um, bit of highlights at the very end the other thing I'm gonna do is in the middle of the nose you have your septum which is the left to right of your nostril or nasal passage I always put that in here with a very soft dagger stroke coming up And now that looks a little bit more normal. And then it comes down to that center. This is the time if you want to add some, add a little textures you can bring up. Bumps in the skull and things like that. You can just kind of put some stuff in at this point if you want under here. But again, keep it soft, keep it easy, and you won't have, you won't back yourself in a corner. You'll have room to, to change and pivot. You know, this is where if I wanted to put a horn, you know, I could put the horn in. Right now, if I wanted to, this is about the stage where I would do it. Uh, I'm not going to do it in this one. Maybe I'll do it on my next feed. But this is about the time I would put one in. I would kind of register it in and tie it into the skull, however, wherever you want to put it. You know, whether you want them high or low or however you want to do them. That's what the horns are for. I'm going to leave that eye there. And then I think in these guys, I am going to use this eye, which is a more like kind of a fleshy type of eye. You know, like there's still skin in them. I'm going to put them in there like this. I'm going to highlight above and below it like there's an eye. Let me watch that again. Like that, kind of like there's still some skin and an eyelid in there. I'm going to hit that. I'm just going to shade above it and below it. Now it looks like it still has eyelids. I'm going to move on to the next step. Okay, so now what I have is I've mixed up a little bit of Illustration Black, about one to one. I did Illustration Black, which was a 5051, and the 5056 Illustration Red Violet. Basically, 
it's still black, but it's got kind of a slight purplish tint to it, which is kind of what I like to do um, a lot of times, or I'll do a gray. This time I figured we'd just do black. And now what I'm going to do, a lot of times in this case, I would just go in freehand, but I'm going to go back in with the stencil a little bit and just get some things a little crisper, like especially right here. I want to get in here really uh, defined. Sorry. I want to drop shadow under these guys really good so it separates the, the skulls from the background of the foreground. See, oh, just that little bit. Same thing over here. A little bit. Remember, you can always add more. So. You don't have to go too nuts. Don't go too detailed. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just hit inside that nose a little bit. And I'm going to just kiss where those teeth are going to be. See what I did there? Just, just barely hit it. Okay. And now I'm going to hit under here. But not a lot. It's mainly at this point, this is about... Unless you're going to just make it darker, more bold, this is about where the stencil kind of is done. Um, you can bring in like this with the uh, pocket graphics, and I can I can extend that line up a little bit, or I can find things that work and add that. But for what I'm going to do first is I'm just going to start shading this. Remember, the top of a skull is a sphere. Here's a really good example. When you look at a skull, I have this. Uh, when I spray with Createx Chrome. When you look at a skull from top down, see where that light source is? This is kind of what we're looking at here. You know, that skull is basically this. Okay, so see it's got that big bright spot right there? So we're gonna make sure we keep that and we're gonna shade everything else. And I can keep that in front of, you know, in front of me just for, for reference. So I'm going to start shading, doing a core shadow. If you know anything about cylindrical shading, which you should about how to shade a ball, or if you look inside of the airbrush, you have, you know, the core highlight, which is the brightest one, and then you got the core shadow, which is the darkest one. Um, and you always have a little bit of secondary lighting off to the side. So I always start there and darken that out. The other thing I want to do before I get too far is I really want to separate this guy from the background. So I'm going to really, I'm going to go pretty heavy here. I'm going to hit that. Just get that good, get that good separation off the background. Now, remember these little guys, these little eyebrow things, where I said don't spray a lot? Oop, happy little accidents. Let's go slow. Did there, my stencil is still wet. But I'm not gonna edit that out. I'm gonna leave that there. I'm gonna make sure it's dry. I'm gonna go back through with the white. With that same white, I'm gonna go back through. And watch how easy this is to fix. And I'm gonna go back. See, I messed up right here. I'm just gonna fog this back in with that same white. If these would be easy for me to edit that out and not show you. But look, real simple. Just soften that out. Okay. Now I'm just going to go back to where I was. Right here. And voila, that's gone. Nothing to worry about. Okay, so what I was saying, remember these little guys here where I said don't put a lot of paint in there? I usually don't, you know? Because um, what, what that is, just so I can show you, that's my eyebrow line. So I'm going to paint from that side out. I'm going to follow that down. And now skulls don't really have eyebrows. But I kind of do this. Just to get that separation. And I'm going to run that core shadow about two thirds of the way down. And 
I'm going to darken this eye socket. See what I'm doing here? I'm working with the lines that are there. And I'm kind of freehanding out. And I can take that same skull, the eyeball, and use the positive. And just kind of hit that a little harder. Just shade that. See, by the time I'm done here, this is almost looking like it's not even stenciled. I'm going to bring it up here. I'm going to put some little pick marks in the skull, some little lines. Just some little things. Just to give it interest. I'm going to shade that back and just start letting this become you know just this the whole top of the head which has a lot of interesting little textures and stuff and that's where the texture effects comes in because i can just take a couple mist them in here not a lot and now i can kind of redefine a few of them and just make that look like a little pit in the skull Same thing here, I'm going to core shadow this so it looks like it almost, it almost rolls. I'm going to come up from this darker area and just shade it. I'm going to push that back into the background. Define that. And again, if, you, if you're not comfortable freehand, you can keep you know, bringing the stencil back in and just softly work but you don't want you don't want to really you don't want a super hard edge you want to start softening those edges because the skulls don't have sharp edges and most things in nature don't so therefore you want to keep a nice subtle you know you want it to like just fade out You just use a little bit of texture, so you know, just a little bit goes a long way here. I'm just going to keep going around. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in my Pocket Graphics Rivet Master here, which has a similar size. It's bigger. It's in between. And I'm going to run just a very small pupil right in the center of that eye. And I'll take the in-between. I'm just going to hit it. We'll highlight this in later. And then cheekbone, core shadow down here. You can see there's always you know, there's a little crack that runs up. I'm going to really push that back into the background. shade off that side of the nose and see you're already starting to get all that shape we can get into that nose and there's a lot of times you'll see these cracks running up the nose and usually off to the side I like to run one up the middle a lot of times it just adds a little interest and that runs right up into that brow ridge which will make dark 
by making that dark. See how it just really pops that nose out. Darkening in that nose cavity. Again, your free hand's giving you a little trouble. Get in there with the stencil. You just slowly shade them in. You don't have to go crazy dark, you know, just, just a little. And this septum should meet up to that middle tooth. And when I do these middle teeth like this, I just, I kind of connect and loop from the top. And I come up from the bottom notch. I just kind of connect those. And make sure we shadow underneath it. And you make sure you shadow this side more because that's towards the back of the jaw. So that's going to be darker. The light's not going to be hitting it as much. So when you look at the skull here like this, with this section here is way back here. So it's under the cheekbone. So the cheekbone would be casting a shadow. See how that casts a shadow down? And we'll come back to those little highlights and little things later. And now I'm just going to keep going around this whole section. Now repeat all this on this side. We'll probably speed that up a little high speed camera so you don't have to see it again, but we'll see how that goes on the video. See how fast that comes together? Once you get a rhythm going, and you got one side done, the other side usually comes together pretty quick. Throwing those back teeth away. I'm going to hit this crack. I'm going to hit it here really good and strong. Notice I go tight. I'm going to kind of blend that out and fade that out. The more freehand you work into your stencils, the less stencil like it's going to look. It's going to look like you didn't use one at all. And really, so you, realistically, that's the goal. The stencil should just be a, basically an aid to get your registration down. So you don't have to draw a thousand skulls over and over again, back and forth, back and forth. You know, you can just, you can just keep adding. Turn those back teeth away. I'm going to hit this crack. I'm going to hit it here really good and strong. Notice I go tight. I'm going to kind of blend that out and fade that out. The more freehand you work into your stencils, the less stencil like it's going to look. It's going to look like you didn't use one at all. And really, so you, realistically, that's the goal. The stencil should just be a basically an aid to get your registration down so you don't have to draw a thousand skulls over and over again back and forth back and forth you know you can just you can just keep adding detail instead of sketching and sketching you know if you use them too much they will get repetitive in your work so you know you know I would very rarely just you know, do this one bike, the next bike, the next bike. A lot of times these will be used as background skulls in a larger job or a reference skull, and I'll change it. 
Brought her into a demon. I'll just kind of put it down there as a sketch. But, you know, using it on its own, you know, this is it by itself. What it would look like. And now I'm going to go back through and do the next layer. We'll do these guys and we'll just highlight it all at the very end and tie it together. Alright, let's move on to the other one. So, same process really. Nothing super new here. You know, I'll go really dark here. With the stencil, I'm going to kind of go like this off these teeth because that's inside. I'm going to make sure the darkest area is back in here. And notice how I'm not going all the way in here? That's going to be a set of freehand shading. Same thing here, like this. Now I'm just going to hit the back side of this eye. I'm just going to kiss where these teeth are. Okay, just enough to give me that registration. See how that made the almost the upper palette? And we make sure we get down into here. And I can see those teeth. I'm just going to turn this a little bit more for me. Let's start these teeth for you this time. So, see, I'm going to start from this dark area outside. I'm just going to soft dagger stroke down. I'm going to radius the top. Soft dagger stroke. Soft dagger stroke. I'm just meeting up with those lines from the bottom. And from these lines, I'm going in the middle and going down. And that's creating that, like, socket of the tooth. See that? This is one larger tooth here. And the jaw radius down like this. So we're just going to freehand that in. So these teeth are really, you don't see much of them because they're, you know, the underside. So I usually hit them first. I shade them back. There, there's enough registration. And then I'm going to come in and I'll make sure I drop shadow out here pretty good. Kind of carve that out. Just let that pop. Let that fade away. You know, if you want, you know, the teeth are usually one of the hardest parts. Um, so, you know, you can wait for the end before you attempt them or you get them done at the beginning before you do the rest of the skull so if you did the whole skull and then messed up the teeth you waste all the time on the skull uh, so you could do the teeth first and once you're happy then you can move on to the rest of the skull I'm just gonna loop those in so we're just leaving that tooth to that tooth and then coming down and then that That one goes up to here, this one goes to here. Sorry, my face was in the camera on that one. dark chisel that out this nose comes back little cracks now realistically you should put what I do a lot of times right here from that septum I sometimes blow just a little bit of white in here like this just so from this little mark you know from this little part of the nose which is a septum you can just come back. When you clear it, you'll kind of see that that the nose actually goes in there like that. You definitely, again, study study anatomy. It helps. 
because this is what we're that's kind of the angle we're looking at right now. So see how you can actually see a little bit of that side of the nose. We can do that. We can bring this down like this, and it'll really show up when we when we clear it because it'll be a little delineation in color. Set this eye socket in. And for the eye here, it's a little, we did it kind of like a fleshy eye. So I don't have like an eyelid. And we'll just fade it right back. And that core shadow comes right down like that. Remember this here? This is kind of showing. Just get that jaw separation. We'll darken this up. You're actually, you know, there's actually a lot of little stuff going on here because that's, you know, the back side of the skull you're actually seeing like in this area. You know, so there's actually some stuff going on there. So you can just give a little texture and you can make it darker in here to be a little bit more accurate to what you're seeing because realistically the other side of the jar is coming up there and this is where you tone out that so if you look at a skull here see how this shades down you know, that's kind of the angle we're seeing so you need to just make sure we hit this kind of so it's darker in this area that's what this kind of hook back is here this transition from the front face of the skull you know the jaw to the back side and there'll be a kind of a hard edge there you can go pretty hard right here i just kind of tone off it like that you know, you can spend as much time going for as much realism as you want. Um, I prefer just, you know, a little bit of stylized realism, have some fun with it. These work great on motorcycles or just backgrounds, illustrations, you know, even by themselves, they're great. Make sure we'll tone this all the way back. Yeah, we'll get a little texture in here. We'll use some small Gerald Mendez texture. Just dial that and tie that right in there. I'm just going to blend this out. you know like right here you know that's this whole area you know a lot of times on jobs I don't go too nuts down here I just kind of texture it and just fade it out you know on a black motorcycle or something like this I'm just gonna fade that background so we'll hit that I'm just going to fade this right out. So it just kind of goes right behind. And this jar is casting a drop shadow. Get some detail on the jaw here. You know, when you look at jaw bones, you see all these little picks and things like that, just little holes and slots. And, you know, add as little or as much as you want. And like I said, I'm not using 100% black here. Um, it's got that purple tint. So I still have one more level of detail if I want to go and really hit something hard with a, a full black to really carve something. But I have that freedom. Because I didn't, once you go to 100% black, 
paint, you can't you can't blend and shade out of it. It's already there. But by doing this and using this kind of say 80% black, I can still push and pull more detail. And all I'm doing at this point is basically repeating what I did last time, figuring voiceover with high speed would be a little better for you guys. And I'm just establishing the same shadows, you know, mimicking what I did on the other side, but giving it each side a little, a little unique difference, doing the eye sockets, you know, the jawline, going back and forth, left and right, just to make sure everything's balanced. Now I'm going back to the teeth. I'm just getting continuity to the piece overall. Always thinking of, you know, the tonal value, the dark and light shading, and just build that nice grayscale and getting it nice and even. Carving it from the background, adding a little texture. And tying it back into the center skull. And back to normal. And there's a little And then we'll do some final highlights and this thing will be done. Then either my next video or live feed will be probably the same one, but I'm going to do it starting on a light background and working with just a stencil, so which takes less time because you don't have to do all the initial white shading to kind of build your place. Yeah, I think it looks pretty good. Let's really push this guy back here. You see how working slow and soft doesn't take a long time? It actually takes less time because if you go too dark, then you're constantly trying to make it brighter, the darker, then brighter, then darker, and you would get mud. And I did that for a long time. Um, so I learned to slow down a little bit. When I learned to slow down, it actually took less time to do a piece because I had more control over the piece. All right, on to the next step. So now I'm just gonna switch back to my white. I'm going to go in for a few highlights. My pressure's a little high. I'll drop about 25. I'm going to get that highlight right in the eye. Oh, see that little, just that little bit did. I usually do a little bit towards the bottom as well. Just to give it that wet look on the eye. It just pops it out. Eyebrow ridges. Tip of the nose, you can bring back the template again. If you want, you just, you know, just all the little bits. Now the teeth, this is where you do the little core highlights on the front teeth. And right in the middle, go up. Like right from the socket, you create that little highlight in the socket. This is what I really like to do because we got the pocket graphics here. Just go through. I find this guy works great. And we're just going to define that cheek a little bit more. You can actually go up from the teeth with this as well. 
just this little end piece. Spray on the template up and you'll get nice little rounded sockets. As much or as little as you want. I'm just going to go and hit some key pieces. Extra little textures. You know, just little, little bits at this point. Extra five minutes here, five minutes there. Really just makes the piece that much better. And this is kind of where, you know, you can, depending on the budget you've given the customer, you know, you can spend as much time as you're getting paid for here. Or we'll just put it over the top a little bit. I'm going to do just a little extra lighting on the side. Just really want to pop off that skull. Just a little bit. Same thing here. Let's get these guys. Just little soft dagger strokes. See what that does for the teeth. I'll do them over here. See it a little bit better. Just right at that edge. See, it just brings that tooth out. The teeth are always brighter on the skull because of the enamel. So they can always afford to be a little brighter. brighter. See these little bits of time. Just highlight that a little bit. Just keep working it, you know. At this point, this could be done at any point you want to be done. You can just pick and pick and pick, brightening things, darkening things, do whatever you want to really bring it home. Adding more texture. See what I mean? You can just keep bringing it out. You can tint over it. And then if you want to just go in. A couple little spits of my white by accident. I'm just going to tone those back in. And then what I'm going to do with this purple, because it's got it's a purpley black, I'm just going to add some black right back into it. I'm going to make it darker and just go in for the final. And that, my friends, will wrap it up. See how that just adds an extra bit of dark shading? That extra little bit. It just pushes it back even more. So I can push this back. This. See, so just push that skull further in the background. That's all how you want to work it. I hope you enjoyed this new version of my pack of skulls. It's been a couple years since I've done a video of these. I think it was about time. To give it a little bit more of an update than the original ones. Like I said, just keep playing around with it, get it to the point you want it, and then sign your work. And there's the final project all said and done. I hope you guys got a lot of this video. I have a lot more videos planned for 2021. 
Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Share it with your friends. Let me know what other videos you'd like to see. Until next time, keep on painting. Stay creative. Thanks.